According to the director of the road safety unit, Knut Hare, it takes at least three generations to change a culture. So we are sowing the seeds now with our children. June is Road Safety Month, and it is time for us as adults to practice proper etiquette on the road, which will set the trend for the young and upcoming. Cut your speed and save a life. Remember, if you are late, speeding and risking your life and the lives of others is not worth it. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. We have an interesting show lined up just for you, so stay tuned. Motorists, when driving on the road, here are some simple reminders. Look out for and extend courtesy to all road users. Give plenty of room to pedestrians, especially in wet weather. Drive slowly, no bother wet them up. Slow down when approaching a pedestrian crossing or school and always be prepared to stop. Remember, a school zone is a 30 kilometer zone. Cut your speed. Drivers of large and slow moving vehicles should always keep in the far left hand of a dual carriageway. Keep it simple, drive left and pass right. These are just simple reminders of your road duties. Drive safely. This will be a summer with a difference. Due to the coronavirus, most of you haven't been able to hang out with your friends. And now with beaches, some attractions and restaurants opening up, you may feel it is time to do road. While you are out having fun, remember, road safety is important. So ensure you do your best in practicing safety measures while you are enjoying what the country has to offer. Pedestrians, it is only safe to cross this designated part of the road if you follow the road rules. Never attempt to cross before the indication is given and do not try to beat the oncoming traffic which has the green light. You have overhead bridges and overhead bridges are safe areas that are provided for pedestrians to cross. What we are seeing our pedestrian dashing across dual carriageways and then leaping over concrete medians. That is a no-no. We have had persons who have lost their lives doing that. And I am now appealing to pedestrians to do the right thing and access the overhead bridges that are provided in order to save your own life. Where there is no overhead bridge or crossing sign, use the pedestrian crossing with caution. Monitor the lights and cross when it's safe to do so. That is a dangerous practice and a 99.9% .9 chance of this happening. The amount of kinetic energy that comes on your body, that is going to determine whether or not you survive. There are several signs Road signs are the language of the road. You have informational signs, directional signs, warning signs, and you have enforcement signs. Enforcement signs are erected upright are those that are drawn on the road surface. For example, you have stop sign, one-way sign, and it points in the direction where the one-way is. No U-turn, no parking, no right turn, no entry, a number of signs. If there is no sign that are erected upright, you will see yellow, yellow markings painted on curb walls that constitute no parking, and you should not park in those areas. You park where white, white painting is drawn on those curb walls. Those are areas where parking is permitted. You have continuous white line that are drawn on road surface. No motorist should drive to the right of a continuous white line. There are some other signs, especially like along Nutsford Boulevard, where the dual carriageway is, but there is any elevated median. You see something looking like a zebra crossing. Those crossing the picks, a median, but a median that is not elevated. If you disobey a stop sign, it carries a fine of $4,000.
are six demerit points. If you disobey the traffic light, the red light, that too carries $4,000 a fine or six demerit points. On the approach of a traffic light, for example, half a tree road, Chelsea Avenue, by GIS there. There is no filter light. You are to obey the light and whenever you get green, you are to proceed. These lights are so configured that they allow for a pedestrian to cross. So when that red light is on, pedestrians are crossing. So that's why a filter light is not put in. When approaching a roundabout, you are to yield to the person to the right. Right? Always allow for that person to go first. A similar thing with a heel sign, a giveaway sign. You are to yield to the person and allow that person to proceed. If you have to overtake, you are to do so if the way is clear. And once you complete that maneuver, you are to get back to the left lane and remain there. We have persons anticipating the light. You have those that are anticipating the green, and even before the green comes on, they are off. And you have others who are beating the amber in order to go by as well. And I should tell you this, red means you are to stop, amber means you are to prepare to stop, and green means you are to go, if the way is clear. And remember, always wear your seatbelt. An important message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. What to do if you think you have been exposed or are experiencing signs and symptoms of COVID-19? Immediately call 888-1LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. In addition, you should stay at home. Don't go to work, school, or any public place. Do not use public transport and avoid visitors to your home. You may need to do this for up to 14 days to reduce the spread of the infection. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. As a driver, I bet you've said at some time or another that you know everything about tires. But the big question is, do you really? Grab your checklist and tune into this next feature as we discuss all things tires that you need to know before you take the road this summer. I have absolutely no idea what this is or what it's even used for. But today on Autospot, I'm going to be learning all about tires. And who knows, I might even end up changing one myself. Tire is a ring-shaped component that surrounds the rim, which helps to cushion the road feel and offer a traction and stability of the vehicle. You have all-purpose tires, which can can use in all terrain. You have wet tires. For wet tires, it's for like wet road condition. You can't use a dry tire in the wet season. You will get slippage. For the tire to be completely functional. You need the rim, you need air to be inflated in the tyre to get it to the correct air pressure so that it's suitable for road condition. A cold tyre is when the temperature inside the tyre is reduced to like normal road temperature. At that time is the correct time to check the air pressure within the tyre to give you an accurate reading. For the hot tyres now is when you're driving on the road for a long duration of time and the heat inside the tyre builds up and increase the pressure inside the tire. Tire inflation is the pressure inside the tire, which can be in kilopascal, bars, or PSI. There's an instrument called the tire pressure gauge, which I have here with me, used to take the tire pressure. I can demonstrate for you. First, we have to remove the dust cap from off the tire, place the tire pressure gauge on the tire valve, and it automatically push out the tire pressure gauge and give you the correct reading. 
the driver still needs to, to play a big role in the safety of the vehicle on the road. Now we see a lot of vehicles coming into our premises that were body shop and we see a lot of accidents that, that could have been easily prevented. People texting, people not paying due care and attention when they're on the road. Now Jamaica had over 370 odd deaths last year on the road. It was a big target to get it under 300 this year and that can easily be achievable if people just pay a bit more care and attention when they're driving on the road. The tyre normally has a manufacture date on the side. From that date in which the tyre was produced, you can know when the tyre needs to be changed. Within four, year, four to six years of the manufacture date, the tyre is due for replacement. But what if I'm on the road and I have a flat tyre, what do I do? Okay, the first step is to park the vehicle in a secure location, flat surface. Pull up the emergency handbrake, ensure that the vehicle don't run back or anything. Then you gather your tools, including the jack, lug tool for the jack. Alright, here you have the lug. You're gonna place, yeah, you're gonna place the lug tool on that, ensure that the current lug tool is fit perfectly, and you push it down in the anti-clockwise position. Okay. And you do that for all five lugs. Okay, and it's usually five lugs? No, some vehicle carry four, some carry five, some carry six. But for this okay. application, it's five. Okay. So what else do you do after that? After you remove your lugs, you remove the complete wheel and you have it all for yourself. Then, you go for your spear and place it back on here and screw on back you tighten back your lugs. Alright, so this is what you use to tighten it back? Yeah, this is the lug tool. So you're going in the other direction? Yeah, clockwise. Turning. And you always tighten diagonal. Yeah, you tighten in a clockwise direction. So which one? Which clockwise. One first? It can be anyone, but you can you have to tighten it diagonal. This, 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 then this, and this. Yeah. Cross and cross. So the tire go on, the wheel go on even. And then let down the vehicle, and then you finally talk the lugs to make sure that they are correctly. Where do we usually find the spare tires? Alright, depending on the vehicle type, sometimes the spare is under the vehicle, and the back of the trunk are inside the trunk. So it's not as simple as it seems, but it's clearly doable. It's all in a day's work, well, at least for a newbie like me. But really, it should take about 10 to 15 minutes to change. I can promise you there's so much value in learning to get the job done. I certainly feel accomplished. Up next, we hear from Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett regarding plans to reopen the tourism sector. We are committed to reopening in a safe and controlled manner to protect our most treasured asset, our people. We have developed several tools to protect our workers. The first line of protection we have put in place is a resilience corridor for tourism travel. Tourist movement in this area will be controlled and they will not be allowed to leave the corridor. You will notice that the corridor essentially moves from Negril along the main road areas east, northeast, along that highway all the way to Port Antonio so that all the properties on the windward side or the beach side, so to speak, would be embraced in that corridor. Businesses within the corridor will go through extensive training 
and will not be allowed to open until they have been assessed by TPDCO, which will happen in a phased manner. To guide businesses that are reopening, we have designed detailed operating protocols for each segment of the industry. So we have left nothing for chance here. From training to supplies to procedures, everything is covered in this document. In fact, the World Travel and Tourism Council, a global leader in the tourism industry, has reviewed and endorsed our protocol with their stamp of approval. We have increased the staff complement of the TPD Co's Product Quality Control Department from 11 to 77 to ensure they have the proper capacity to take on this work in the prescribed areas. The ministry commenced training <clears throat> during this period, and indeed during the period when the closure was effected from March 10. On to today, some 5,000 tourism workers have completed training in a number of key skilled areas. I want to ensure that all our workers know exactly what they need to do, how to respond to the variety of different situations that they will encounter, and most importantly, I want them to be trained not just in their ordinary skills, but also in the skills of communicating and supporting emotional activities and developments that may happen around them while they are at work. As a next step, each business will be assessed by TPD code to ensure they are compliant with the protocols and that the workers have been trained before they are allowed to open. If the assessment is successful by the TPDCO, they will receive a certificate, which I'm sure you're seeing on screen. And they will receive that certificate, which must be displayed properly in their establishment to indicate that their business is the TPDCO protocol compliant. It is important to recognize that the support will not stop once the assessment is complete. The workers will receive ongoing training and the comfort of knowing the businesses that they are involved in while we monitor and ensure that there is ongoing compliance on the part of all. All workers will have access to an on-site trained COVID-19 safety point person and an on-site or on-call medical professional. This combination of resources will provide workers with the resources they need for quick health consultation, isolation, and testing if required. In addition, we are in, we are in a final stage discussion now with insurance and global logistics providers. They will also enable travelers who test positive to be quickly isolated and repatriated. This will help to reduce the strain on our public health system, making sure healthcare capacities that we know we have is consistent for our workers and for our communities. Persons will be able to pay tribute to the late Honorable Shahini Robinson on June 16. Closed to casket viewing will be held in Kingston at the Jamaica Labour Party headquarters on Belmont Road. This will be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Condolence books will also be opened at Gordon House and at the Office of the Prime Minister for signing by government and public officials. Meanwhile, Ministry staff and the general public will be able to sign at the Ministry of Labour and Social Security Office. Social distancing protocols will be observed.
Father's Day is a week away, and if you haven't bought your gift yet, then my question is, what are you waiting for? Fathers make an important difference in the lives of their children. A good father possesses the qualities of a loving, involved, and engaging man. He really is important in both big and small ways. Not all fathers want an extravagant gift. Some just want to be shown love and appreciation. Some may even just want to spend some time with you. Whatever the case may be, make some time for yours on Father's Day, Sunday, June 21. Mend broken relationships if necessary. Embracing family is an important part on the journey of making Jamaica a place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. <laughs> You've asked for it, and now it's here. The Jamaica Information Service has updated its mobile app. It's easier to navigate, loads even faster than before, talking about top speed, operates seamlessly across platforms, and we're a creative bunch, so it's much easier on the eyes. Now you have quick and easy access to new stories, television and radio features, and a variety of photos right at your fingertips. And you'll get push notifications when new content is uploaded. Download the app on your Apple and Android devices now and get news you can use. Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica, on the go. It's World Blood Donor Day and we would like to say thank you. Thanks to everyone who has voluntarily donated blood which has helped to save the lives of hundreds of thousands of people across the island. Don't stop now. Once you are able to donate, do so today. Remember, you never know when you'll be in need of that blood. I was first introduced to the idea of donating blood when I was attending Calabar High School. My uh, key club had the idea of um, keeping a blood drive, but back then I was too young to donate. My mother is a nurse, so I have always known about the importance of donating blood, but I never donated until something tragic had happened and a co-worker was in need of blood. The first time I gave blood was back in 2008 when my mom was diagnosed with cancer. She's the main reason why I took the first opportunity to give blood. Unfortunately, I, I stopped donating blood because um, my mom had passed. Um, she succumbed to her cancer, and as a result, I didn't have any reason to donate blood. After that first time donating, I did not donate for several years. Not because I didn't think it was important, it was just not a priority. I didn't have any other family member who was ill at that time or anybody being pregnant or expecting a child. So I didn't really have a reason to give a blood on someone's behalf. Well, my dad uh, called me one day and said that, um, Jay, you know, uh, I'm, going, going, I'm going to the hospital and I'm going to do a little procedure. But I, I need you to, to donate some blood for me. At the time, I didn't know what it was. It's afterwards when I found out that he also has a form of cancer. I was turning 30 a few years ago, and I didn't want to just have a regular birthday party. So I started thinking about what I could do, and the first idea I had was a blood drive. My family experience actually brought the reality home before I would see commercials or I would hear people talk about giving blood and I wouldn't even consider it because it didn't affect me. I donate because it's a simple act of kindness and it goes a far way in saving someone's life. Plus it's also a benefit to me health-wise. People should donate blood because really that's the only way that persons who need it can get it, unfortunately. Modern medicine and science hasn't found a way to make blood. 
it's a very good feeling because everybody grows up, you know, reading about superheroes and so I get to be a superhero all the time. Knowing that my act actually goes towards saving someone's life is quite a humbling experience. I celebrate life by saving a life. You have a valid pint. What's your measure? Share a pint today. Share a pint today. Speeding through life and the traffic lights Doesn't let me get hurt and the tears start cry Save a life for the kids For you and I save kids' lives Make the road safe where the day Pedestrians, passengers, cars and bikes Save a life for the kids For you and I save kids' lives Hey man, it's our job to keep the road Them safe and protect yeah, yeah. care of the youth Them so we know them safe And up here the road would No race, no bother with the speed In case, make peace and Check your light, them are your tires and brakes Riders and the pillars are left in your mates I put on the cell phone, no send no text No matter what color, they find your place Then teach the youth them how to cross road. I beg you obey the road signs back road. I put the young ones in a car seat all good. And everybody drive good and walk good. And we say young and old, I beg you cross good. Remember the dark clothes at night that is hot good. From you by you so the sidewalk is all good. When you're on the road. Thanks for watching another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll do this all over again. Until then, send your feedback on today's show to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Also, follow us on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Download our app on your Apple and Android devices. And you can also visit our website, gis.gov.jm, for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.